Namaste. How are you doing, Hasif? Hi. Happy Eid. Happy Eid to you. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Ah. आपको मेरी आवाज आ रही है? Am I coming in now? Yes, yes, yes. But can you hear me? Ah, okay, okay. Just a minute. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Am I audible to you? Yeah, very much brief, uh, very clear, and very easy. It's very I can decipher every word you say. Okay, excellent, excellent. Welcome, 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 Asif. Bye. You need to stabilize your image. Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes, yes. Just, just give me a couple of uh, a minute or so to stabilize yeah. because uh, uh, I need something to, uh, you know, just put it up on, and then we can carry on from there. Okay, no problem. Welcome, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Welcome, 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 friends. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another webinar of Hasib's. Hasib is going to take you through a magical journey through Gujarat to some of the lesser known places. And I'm glad you're here. Happy Eid to all of you. Eid ki khub mubarak aap sabko. Aur bhoat hi khushi ka mauka hai. तो क्या हुआ हम लोग घर पे हैं तो वो भी ठीक है वो भी अच्छा है जब लोगों को नहीं मिल सकते हैं और अपनी फैमिली के साथ भी स्पेंडिंग टाइम सो दैट्स गुड एक्सीलेंट सो वेलकम लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वेलकम मसीह भाई आई एम गोइंग टू फ्रेंड्स इफ यू कैन हियर मी वेल एंड यू कैन इफ यू कैन हियर मसीह भाई वेल प्लीज प्लीज टाइप यस इन द चैट बॉक्स सो वी नो दैट यू आर ऑल लिसनिंग टू अस क्लियरली वेलकम प्रेम प्रेम जी वेलकम महेंद्र महेंद्र जी वेलकम सलील वेलकम अदर जी सलील धन जी वेलकम 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 ऑल आर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम मनीष जी उमंग जी सो गुड टू सी ऑल ऑफ यू इट वाज एन इजी डे इट वाज मोर अबाउट यू नो टॉकिंग टू वेरियस पीपल in the office and uh, uh, you know wishing everyone eat it was lovely so friends i'm going to get started with uh, hasib's introduction straight away let me read it out to you quickly and then i'll introduce myself as well Hasib Sheikh is a keen wildlife and a nature enthusiast who works as a freelance naturalist with an experience as a consultant with wildlife, nature and conservation education center promoting nature and environment education and awareness. He began his career by studying the behavior of leopards in the wild for 15 years at Jambugoda Wildlife Sanctuary near Baroda, Gujarat and he has been active in promotion and conservation of the biodiversity in the region. He frequented the Gir National Park to study Asiatic lions. He is official snake and crocodile handler and rescuer for Gujarat Forest Department. He is also an artist and a painter. His art is dedicated to the cause of nature and environment. In 2009, he led a group of 8,000 students to create a new Guinness World Record for the world's longest painting on pollution and biodiversity. Wow, that's commendable. That's really good. So, a quick introduction about myself. Most of you already know me, but some of you probably won't. I'm Mohit Agarwal. I'm blessed with four children, a son and a daughter, out of and two non-humans. One is a Labrador, and one is an escapee African Grey. I'm a follower of Shiva. Professionally, I'm an experiential ecotourism specialist with a deep love for nature. I help people travel to some wonderful places in Asia. I'm on the board of Asian Ecotourism Network. I've been trained and certified by GSTC in sustainable tourism. I'm the founder of Asian Adventures, a 27-year-old travel outfit. It is the largest and number one bird watching tour company in India. I'm also the founder of NetNet, an email marketing company. 
This company run a large mission to help Asian elephants with their predators, free the environment of plastic waste, help small wildlife NGOs, and conserve the ancient Himalayan shrines. So that was a bit about myself. Over to you, Haseeb Bhai. Oh, I forgot to. Let me let me let me quickly tell you guys what I missed out. Haseeb Bhai has been working relentlessly with COVID-stricken people with his team of 25 people, with his friends of 25 people team. They've been taking bodies to graveyards, to cremation grounds, and giving their, giving them respectful goodbyes with all the right things which need to be done for the deceased. And it's not an easy job, right? And look at the smile on his face <laughs> because, because there's so much freedom within him, right? So, uh, so what's your what's your message here, uh, Hazim Bai, to the audience? Well, uh, it is pretty easy. This is India is a kaleidoscope, as I as I've been always been saying that, and we are a homogeneous mixture of amazing cultures, ethnicities, and uh, you know, faith. So, tum bhi piyo, hum bhi piye, rab ki meherbani, pyar ke katore mein Ganga ka pani. So, <laughs> that's how you go about. And today's count my on the Eid al Fitr day. Let me wish Eid Mubarak to all my friends who have been joining here with Mohit Bhai and me right here. So Eid al Fitr Mubarak uh, but uh, uh, today's count is two two bodies. Uh, one at the Samshan and one at the Kabristan. So yeah, Alhamdulillah, we 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 gave them some respectful goodbyes from this funny dunya as I call it, Alhamdulillah. Uh, and it was a Friday, so we had two two masses, sermons or khutbah. So it was a very good day. Uh, one of them was just uh, the one at the Samshan was just left outside. You know, probably the family was too. They went hysterical, and because there was a line, and the one is in a bad shape. Let's tell you. Uh, so we just went there, and thankfully to the Samshan people, they they allowed us. They always allow us. They're good people out there. And uh, and then the other one we took to the Kabristan. It was he was a young guy, 30, 36, 37, three children. But uh, life goes on. Life goes on. You know, zindagi ka safar kaatna hi tha. Dum jagu the chal diye thak gaye to soliye. Kya baat hai? Okay, over to you, Hasib Bhai. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank Mohit Agrawal Sahab and the team. And they have, this is the second time around that I've been talking on the Asian Adventures TV. It's like uh, uh, with me and Mohit Bhai, it's been love at first sight and everything matched, the frequencies matched and our passion for love, you know, for the wild and all that. So, uh, you know, we were at the same frequency level. So during the Lion webinar, uh, you know, it was the first time that I was talking with, uh, on on Asian Adventure webinar, and today he again asked me to come across because Gujarat uh, <coughs> is another explored place, and Mohit Bhai somehow I feel always like Gujarat. It's, uh, it's when I'll be talking about it, you'll know what Gujarat exactly is. It never needed any kind of tourism push because Gujaratis were always businessmen, and therefore Gujarat remained unexplored in more ways than one over the centuries, and finally. Today I get to talk something about Gujarat and these less visited places. Uh, you know, if you just go around the smaller places, people always think big, talk big, but there are small little things that happen. So these are the, some unknown places. I chose two of them. One of them was, as I may put it, as my karma bhumi, Jambu Goda, and another is the beautiful Vela Vada, the golden carpet. So we'll be talking awesome. about it. Uh, a slight, yeah. A start, a slight, slight presentation. Yeah, please. Yeah, okay. We begin. We begin. So uh, let me pay uh, old uh, to Mohit Bhai here. There I am, uh, just trying to show that I love my wildlife, and that's me at Pango. Mohit Bhai, if you would know, this is the Bagar Road down, going down the Bagar Road. And I was there at the Jungle Lore, your own Asian adventure, Jungle Lore. And then I went by and and I saw, would you believe me, four fine martens, four yellow, so rather yellow throated martens. Uh, uh, when I was there and I had this American team with me and it, it was amazing. So I climbed up this, uh, this tree outgrowing a ledge and there was a huge drop of about 
uh, about 125 feet down and i had a wonderful view of uh, things down there down the bugger road so uh, real life adventures are are you know adrenaline pumping experiences and they are something that intrigues people and there is nothing that can overrun the excitement when it comes to such experiences in the wild none against uh, you know uh, uh, none amongst our participants today will disagree that love for wild and wilderness is like addiction and those addicted to wild are certain to stick with it till they breathe their last i have always believed one doesn't necessarily love the beautiful wilderness but the wilderness compels one to fall in love with it you know? so it's it's a beautiful pride being a wildlife or it may not get your money being a naturalist you may not be a millionaire but is that satisfaction deep within you and something that you're getting through and walking to your grave Uh, and then you say wow i'm happy that i lived a wonderful life and i'm really happy that i lived life so if you could go to slide 2 and the inspirational uh, you know yeah slide 2 please so uh, slide 2 as in slide this is the matter which i'm going to speak so, so yeah exactly uh, many naturalists conservators Field biologists, wildlife authors, and photographers have been motivated to venture out in the wild. And to my reckoning, the chief inspiration for their affinity with the wild is through reading, write-ups, columns, anecdotes, books on wildlife penned by some inspirational figure or an earlier generation who was a master of painting word pictures. Uh, now I say so as my addiction to uh, the exciting and adventurous wild was chiefly inspired by reading write-ups and columns and anecdotes and books. uh other than my hero jim corbett uh there are many others who through their writings uh, took over the reins of uh, you know or my imagination and pushed me into the wilderness to name a few my mentor in chief late ma rashid sahab my grand uncle the principal chief conservator of forest gujarat state up till 1982 uh sherjan beautiful writer he was very less known billy arjun singh well known salim ali sahab who doesn't know him and george scholar kenneth anderson joy adamson you know he's he's a famous character when it comes down to uh you know africa dunbar brander not many probably fw champion and many to name i grew up dreaming the jungles and lang- landscape through the books and right up spent by this awesome man uh yet again today on this webinar hosted by asian adventures i dedicate uh, my contribution what little i know and what little contribution that i could give uh, and sharing to my mentor uh, jannat nasheen late ustad guru inspiration late amir rashid sahab principal chief conservator of forest gujarat forest department is the man they call the bishma pitama of what we call the modern gear today uh, he's the man who set it up uh, and so i dedicate uh, this webinar to him uh, so if you could go to the next slide uh, please uh, just just keep the right up exactly wildlife hotspots of gujarat uh, now a naturalist being from gujarat uh, let us today take a sneak peek into the wild hotspots of gujarat and see why lately gujarat has surged forward with a leap as a preferred destination when it comes to wildlife and i'm sure mohit bhai would agree with me he has got this uh, nice uh, deer birding lodge at here and he would agree that in last 5 uh, or 7 years uh, you know a lot of people from india various parts of india are hitting gujarat and they are asking not just gear but they are asking for some amazing other destinations throughout gujarat as i told you before gujarat is an unexplored place if we uh, please go to the gujarat political map the next slide please let's keep the right up yeah This is the Gujarat political map, the westernmost uh, state of uh, India. Let's see it. Gujarat, uh, the westernmost state, has the longest coastline for any state in India. So no wonder Gujarat has one of the national parks, the uh, Marine National Park, because it's got the longest uh, coastline. Uh, Gujarat is blessed with a very geographical diversity that one can find, as in geography books, except for the snowfall. Except for the snowfall, we got like, everything in. you know it's blessed with hills mountains ranges green belts desert 
arid areas, wide dry plains, fertile plains, islands and creeks, and not many states in India have that diversity. You can decipher it well when I say Gujarat has a temperate, desert, savanna-like and eucerine vegetation. So this vegetation comes only when the climate is according. So you can exactly, you know, if there is a botanist listening to me, he would exactly know what I mean. Uh, if we could go to the next slide, we can always keep the right apart. Yeah, uh, next. This is it. Exactly. Now uh, we are talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, hotspots of uh, Gujarat. And Gujarat has four national parks. So we can name it easily the Gay National Park. Uh, the Marine National Park, the Vela Wadar National Park, about what I've been, I, I'll be talking hopefully, inshallah, today. And the Gin National Park, I've done it before when Mohit Bhai had given me a chance to do so. And the fourth National Park, which nobody knows, not even the best of naturalists or conservationists or field biologists in Gujarat, is the Vasta National Park in South Gujarat. It's just 24 square kilometers. But thanks to Maharaj Ankal, I used to call him Maharaj Ankal, I think with Rasni Solanki, uh, may Allah bless him with Jannah. Uh, he was a wonderful person and it's a beautiful place, but no more leopards there. The tribals have all, you know, gone preserved with it. There are no, the wildlife is almost zero now. And Gujarat is spearheaded by indomitable Gil National Park, the abode of the Asiatic Nile. And I've had a full session here on Asian adventures, primarily focusing on Gil National Park. And therefore, we shall move on and talk of some small centuries that are worth a visit. Not much is known about them, you know. So one of them is the beautiful, it's a very beautiful, lovable. I mean, you fall in love with the ambience out there. It's a Vela Odar National Park. The slide you see here is India and the red spot, if you can see, in the Savras Peninsula of Gujarat, towards the eastern side of the peninsula is where the city of Kaunagar lies. So the Vela Odar National Park is uh, located with a red dot is there on the Savras Peninsula of Gujarat in Western India, uh, as seen in the national map here. It is also known as the Black Buck National Park, obviously, because the primary focus in this national park is the conservation of uh, the Black Buck, the antelope. Uh, the park was established in 1976, and it is located 42 kilometers uh, northeast of Bhavnagar City uh, in the Savras region, what they call the Bhal region, actually. And uh, in area, the national park is 35 square kilometer. Uh, the extended area of the park go along with the coast of the Gulf of Kambat. Now you can see the Gulf of Kambat cutting in uh, into Gujarat from south to north. That is, if you take it from the Bombay side and just come up, it shoots inside. The creek comes in. Uh, and so, you know, and this uh, national park, basically, the grassland, it is a grassland, was primarily the hunting ground of the Maharaja of the princely state of Bhavnagar, where the royal family and the royals used to hunt the black buck with their famous hunting cheetahs. Now, that's a different story on a different day. I love that story. And someday I'm going to, when Mohit Saab is back, uh, I'm going to ask him to do it on the cheetah and why we lost cheetah someday. So the hunting cheetah used to run in this beautiful grassland and savanna-like grassland. Uh, uh, let us go to the next slide, please. Uh, here we are going to talk about the typical landscape uh, of Vela Vadar. Now, there I am on my different visits. I've just given a two, two examples on two different seasons that I've been there uh, at the Black Park National Park. The National Park, uh, you know, I put two pictures uh, to give you an idea how one would look like when at National Park at Vela Vadar with respect to the landscape there. You can see the golden grass there. The entire uh, National Park is a flat land with precious few dry golden grass carpeting and the lens making the landscape captivating throughout, you know. And the National Park is woven through this grasslands, the dry grassland, with interweaving beaten tracks for the vehicles to make work. Now, the, the beaten tracks are beautiful somehow, although man-made, but they are in almost at the right angle. So, you know, you could just go on and keep on circling if you want and if you find a good herd, or you can just change your square right there and get into the other square. Uh, so, and, and all the while, 
this beautiful grass it captivates you i've seen people not picturing the black box there but taking the pictures of the beautiful golden grass with the light falling on it you know how photographers are that light thing with them i'm not a photographer though i never carry a camera most of the pictures that you see almost all the pictures that you see on this uh, presentation and also in the last presentation are are by someone else not by me uh, i i don't own a camera my camera are my eyes uh so if you could go to the next slide please yeah now this is our subject uh, the national park uh, it's also a success story when it comes to the conservation of the serene antelope i consider it to be a very serene this antelope uh, the black buck and as we can see in the slide the black buck lacks nothing when it gels with the captivating golden grass now look at this alpha male right there you know one of my friends clicked with sagid khan and the alpha male how like he is he's got some attitude at this stand you know and primarily it is the herds of antelope that attract the visitors to the grass now this herds could number from 20 to about 150 huge herds and the alpha male has a tough time controlling this herd and it is this herd that literally command attention all the while and i'll give you the next slide will give you a very good example why the photographers love this herd now here is a beaten track the biggest tree street and the moment worth a visit for the photographers and other visitors at vela wadar national park is when large herds of black buck queue up in lengthy rank and file and jump across the 20 feet wide beaten track with ease as if poetry in motion and this moment at times lasts up to 10 to 12 minutes it's a no miss moment you know the one jumps second comes in third comes in fourth comes in and they they do it in such a disciplinary manner and you just keep your camera on i've seen uh, i've seen photographers just shooting like machine guns in a cut 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 there it goes and and every frame has this beautiful uh, uh, you know jumping black bird and they could they could just rise up to 8 feet staggering 8 feet from the ground uh, as in an altitude then 20 feet jump with ease with nothing left to you know uh, hide with that and my forefathers in urdu used to call chokri bharna means with, with these four legs you know with, with the four two four legs and two hind legs these four limbs that they have you know two are far behind and two are far in front the chokri bharna char leg pano ke saath so it's a beautiful the term chokri bharna comes from here actually so this is something that is so beautiful and it's a no miss photographers just love that other than this black bug in this beautiful sanctuary the velavadar sanctuary uh you know the other treat to watch uh is the uh, you know wolf the indian wolf it's it's it's, it's a beautiful land now this is uh, the second biggest attraction if i put it my way second biggest attraction uh at the national park Dolin and Lanky when compared to the European wolf. Now we 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 have been seeing a lot of Western movies and we have been seeing this beautifully coated, uh, thick coated wolves around. These are almost new. <laughs> you know they 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 have small hair. They are greyish. They look dirty, rusty. But you know uh, they lack nothing. They lack nothing when uh, you know uh, it comes to self. it comes to aggression and it comes to behavior the wolf packs are pretty elusive though and secretive too you know yet often they have been filmed and photographed hunting the black bucks and the blue bull juvenile uh, giving out their strategies and plannings fortunately the wolf numbers are increasing at vela wadar you have to remember that vela wadar national park it's a very disciplined park although not the staff is less uh, probably when you compare it to many nas other national parks in india the visitors are less but it's a very disciplined national park very disciplined national park. you know everyone who goes there behaves well and it's 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 been well our there is a must always remember that so uh then we go to the, the striped hyena now this is another denizen of the velavadar landscape and uh 
of the National Park, the striped hyena, the Indian hyena, you may call it. Surprisingly, at Vela Vadar, one can sight the striped hyena frequently during daylight in winter. Now, in winters, whenever I've gone to Vela Vadar, and I, 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 I love to walk on the road, I love to walk on, you know, trying to, I, I don't even like using binoculars, but if sometimes I'm compelled to use the binoculars, if I see the movement of a hyena or a wolf far away from the main road, that is the commutable road uh, uh, that, uh, you know, goes into the park, through the park, uh, uh, cutting the park into two halves. Uh, and uh, from that road, which is at a, quite a height, you could see in winters, I never miss to see in a daylight. And somehow they're very solitary. Uh, uh, at Vela Vadar, the hyenas don't come up. At all. I've never seen them in groups. So, uh, never sighted. I've always sighted the solitary uh, uh, hyena. And hyena is a beautiful animal. I mean, it's an animal worth a look. It's an animal worth a look or introspect when it comes to habit. Uh, it may be dirty. It may be called a scavenger or a looter or whatever name you give it. It's a, it's a very interesting animal. Uh, if you could move to the next slide, please. Yeah, this beauty. This lovely beauty, you know, you, you can call it the Chumeshwari. Uh, you know, you could literally give a Chumatri. Uh, the endangered yet the beautiful lesser Florida, which is the smallest amongst all the busters. And it is considered to be the endemic Indian species and it's found here at Vilamata. Now it is said, it is said that the lesser Florida, the greatest number, the largest population of the lesser Florida is the Vilamata, the largest population. And this is a, a photograph of fish. This bird, oh, this this bird in the You just give your heart away to it. Uh, then, if you could move to the uh, next slide, please. Now, Vilavadar has been uh, known for its raptors, especially the harriers. You know, there are four species of harriers that you find here. And here <laughs> in the picture, you see the pallid harrier. The pallid harrier. Is, 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 all the harriers are beautiful. In fact, I love raptors. Although I'm not very good at raptors, but I love raptors. Uh, for birds, birders in particular, Vela Vadar is a heaven as far as raptors are concerned. And the most exciting prospect at Vela Vadar are, of course, the harriers. According to Roger Geoffrey Clark, the British harrier expert, I repeat, Roger Geoffrey Clark, the British harrier expert, uh, harrier goose found in the park is one of the largest in the world. The roosting of the harrier at Velavadar Park is the largest in the world, according to this uh, uh, gentleman uh, who is an harrier expert. And one can find the Monte Goose Harrier, Pallet Harrier, Marsh Harrier. Marsh Harrier is very easy to find at Velavadar, very easy at Velavadar. Now, if we could go to the next slide, talking about Velavadar, uh, you know, the other mammals, one can find foxes and jackals, jungle cats, wild pigs, hares and rodents in the savanna type grassland and constructs of Velavadar. Among the other birds is the McQueen's Bustard, which is also find, found aplenty in the little run of catch. Uh, sand grouse, oh, some very beautiful sand grouse this year. Bush jets, wheat ears, Franklin. Variety of larks. Now, this is no miss. Larks. This variety of larks. And as you drive, uh, cutting through the golden grass on the beaten track, the larks will just somehow come and sit right in front of your vehicle and then fly away as you drive through that. And they're a treat to watch. You know. uh, and waders are seen in fair numbers. At, because... Uh, but the ground is a bit, the terrain is a bit uneven. Soon after uh, the monsoon, uh, a lot of big, uh, huge puddles and uh, small ponds are created. And the waders love those kind of, uh, uh, you know, places to come around and land down and rest for a while. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, bye. Yeah, we can skip this part. Ah, now the important part for those who are uh, just listening to this beautiful Vela Vadar, uh, about the beautiful Vela Vadar Park. Uh, and this is how you can uh, reach Vela Vadar. And uh, 
Bhavnagar airport is connected with Mumbai with daily flight, but it's a small airport, only Mumbai connectivity is there. The closest international airport is the Sadar Vallabhai Patel Airport at Ahmedabad, which is about 153 kilometers by road. Uh, and the closest railway station is a small town of Dola, which is about 50 kilometers. But uh, I recommend uh, uh, for those who wish to come to this beautiful uh, terrain, this beautiful landscape of Vilawada to see this amazing black bug, uh, they should come to Ahmedabad, uh, you know, first. And from Ahmedabad, they should take a private vehicle and go to Vilawada. And it has got some very good places to stay, uh, very nice places to stay. You know. uh, a little bit expensive though, uh, but uh, very good. You know, you 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 would love it. And the Vilawada Park remains closed uh, in monsoon uh, from 15 June to uh, 15 October. That's somehow like every other place in India. And this is also the breeding season for the black bird. And important bird species like lesser floric and they breed during this period when the park is closed. And, but my recommendation for the visitors who like to visit this beautiful park uh, is from October to March. And from October to March, if they come here uh, and they will find this beautiful, uh, because the fawns of the black bird are ready and the mothers would walk slowly with the fawn. And the fawns just, fawns just don't get in control and the mother, they give a hard time to the mother to get into the rank and the file of the system of the black bugs to go around. Uh, it's a beautiful thing to see the behavior of the black bug, the behavior of the world, the behavior of the hyena. Uh, I have had so many innumerable experiences at Vela Vala, uh, you know, of the wolves coming very close to me. And by the time I take out my cell phone, just to take a small picture for my own memory. They just know somehow that this is something wrong and they walk away. <laughs> Hainas are equally smart that way. You know, they would sometimes come very close to you, but then they would just walk away. They say, no, no, I don't want to get pictures by you. Uh, and so, Velavadar, beautiful place. It's, uh, a, a small worry for me, uh, for the Velavadar thing is that uh, for, 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 uh, the visitors or the photographers who are running on budget, uh, there's not much, uh, only a few places the government, the forest department places to stay. Uh, but for those who are using this uh, 5 million, 6 million lands, you know, for them, they have a couple of nice places to stay, high and lavish places to stay. I'm not here to advertise for anyone, but you could find it out for yourself. And that's a treat to, you know, it's worth, worth, your money, the place is the same. So, Velavada, please do come to my Gujarat, the Garbi Gujarat, and come and see Velavada if you haven't seen it yet. It's an amazing place to be. Uh, lovely morning. The mornings are beautiful. Just the sunlight, when, when, when the sunlight falls on this golden grass that's standing up, it's like the carpet. It's like someone has spread down the gold dust all over the place on a carpet, and it would just, you know, you, you, your eyes would just pop out looking at you. The glare will just kill you. Uh, so, so much for Velavadar. Let's go to my Karma Bhumi, as I said when I begin. Jambu Bora. Thank you. Now here, again, uh, when we see this, uh, you know, to me, the uh, this part of talk is closest to my heart, and a special place in my heart it has. Uh, I put some impetus in Jamugara Wildlife Sanctuary as, uh, as it has been my school of wildlife studies for 15 years. It is here that I studied the leopard in the wild. And I was craving to visit Ranthambore National Park and study the tigers there when my mentor and my grand uncle, late Amir Rashid, came hard on me and said, why do you want to visit, uh, you know, elsewhere when nature has provided you a smart feline? just a stone's throw away from Baroda. I, 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 I was born and brought up in Baroda. Uh, and so my mentor said that if you do not know your own background, you know, your own backyard, how will you learn about things elsewhere? So why, why go to Ranthambur or why go to Karbek? Learn your backyard first so as if somebody asks you, and that thing just hit me right in the middle of my eyes. And I said, wow, he's right. I should know my backyard. And so, Though lesser known, though very small, though the apex predator just being 
the the leopard if i say just being it doesn't mean leopard is a very smart animal but then tiger is always on the mind when <laughs> you know we uh, we think about wildlife so uh, it took me a while to adjust with the leopard but then i fell in love with it uh, so jambugura wildlife sanctuary is located in the panchmahal district of central gujarat as you can see on the map now this is on uh, the eastern side of the uh, creek of gulf of khambat that you know pierces into uh, india through gujarat as you can see on the map uh, the vela wadar was on the western part now this is on the eastern part uh, and it is 70 kilometers from vadodara or baroda and 20 kilometers from from the unesco world heritage site of champaner the champaner archaeological park or it was then known as mahammadabad uh jambugoda was declared as a sanctuary in 1990 so in 1982 when pccf late amir rashid sahab uh, you know retired uh, he promised uh, rana vikram singh ji the thakur sahab or the raja sahab of uh, jambugoda saying we shall declare it uh, as a sanctuary that with the help of then the prime minister rajiv gandhi sahab late rajiv gandhi sahab uh, it was declared in 1990 as uh, the uh, you know uh, as a as a wildlife sanctuary and they are now pushing the raja sahab who is still live speaking and very active is pushing it to give it a name of a leopard sanctuary and the joint efforts of raja sahab and uh, vikram sir rana sahab and retired pcc of rashid sahab my mentor paid off the total area of the jambu goda wildlife sanctuary is 135 square miles 135 square kilometers is the total uh, area in which this beautiful wildlife sanctuary uh, lies uh, if you could go to the next slide please here i am going to show you the typical landscape of jambugoda now there are few lakes in there uh, it's a hilly terrain uh, the sanctuary is very typical of dry deciduous forests of india the entire sanctuary consists of forested hills as well as plains Uh, infested with small villages and hamlets in which uh, the tribals live the tribals of the barya nayak and chaudhri tribes they dwell there uh teak mahua and bamboo thickets are the dominant covering of the forest teak teak wood that is tectona grandis ma uh, mad, mahua that is madhu uh, maduka longifolia and bamboo sa vamin and bamboo sa striata uh, six or seven species of bamboo right there uh that that dominates the thicket in the forest uh if you could go to the next slide please yeah yeah the apex predator the leopard the smartest of all the 38 felines we find and i i i dare challenge anyone who would like to argue with me is the smartest the smartest feline the smartness shows when uh, you know when 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 you read about tigers <laughs> the fuck tigers get very easily hurt with the porcupine the leopard never gets hurt with the porcupine believe me so uh, the leopard uh, the leopard is the apex predator at jambugoda wildlife sanctuary i have been involved with many leopard censuses over the year uh, up to 2010 when i left uh, baroda and for ahmedabad in 2011 i have been uh, you know there a uh, lot of this conducted by the gujarat forest department at jambugoda and i proudly share that jambugoda wildlife sanctuary is one of the few places where humans peacefully coexist with the apex predator in the area the last human leopard conflict noted at jambugoda was in 1983 that's a million years away also so <laughs> so you know uh, they just peacefully coexist Uh, with the humans, with the small hamlets and the small uh, tiny villages around there. Surprisingly, there are two places where the locals address leopard as the dog-eating tiger. Dog-eating tiger. There are two places, and these places are miles, thousand miles apart from each other, and yet they call it with the same name, the dog-eating uh, tiger. In Gujarat. kutra khawa wado wag the call it in jambugoda kutra khawa wado wag means the tiger that eats away the uh, the the dog 
and the the other place is the hills of Nainital, where you ask someone about the leopard and you say Tendua or Guldar in Urdu, they would know, just know nothing about it and they would say, Kaun ho kutte khane wala sher? Haan ji kutte khane wala sher hai? So that's how, you know, so, so how common humans study the behavior. This is my point in raising up this issue. That, you know, uh, about 1250 kilometers away from each other. And they call it by the same name because of the behavior of the leopard. Favorite prey of leopard is, of course, the dog. Uh, uh, just like Jawai in Rajasthan, often one can find uh, leopards at Jambu Boda Wildlife Sanctuary basking on the boulders on high hills early in the morning with a field view of the human activity down below. So on, on higher boulders, they would just see bask in the, sit and bask in the sun and they would just have a nice view of probably a singular or a dual vehicle going around and people and women going to the lakes and ponds and wells to fetch water and women washing here and there and the cattle grazing. And they would just take a nice bird's eye view from over there. So uh, could we move on with the slide, please? Yeah, now this is another beauty of Jabugoda, the sloth bear. Sloth bears are very common in Jambugura wildlife sanctuary. Uh, major sightings happen during the summers because in summers the sloth bear feel very irritated and they just come out and they would like to, you know, venture out in open. Uh, anyway, they are hairy, so uh, it's natural that they are not very comfortable with the heat. Uh, uh, Jambugura wildlife sanctuary has a hilly terrain full of huge rock boulders and white crevices and the covering of bamboo trees. Now, what else does a bear want? Uh, it is also ideal for honeybees as they tend to build the honeycombs on high rocky, uh, you know, terrain. And that makes it a winning situation for the sloth bear who are honey lovers, you know. Uh, also, variety of berry plants uh, in through, uh, you know, uh, uh, throughout Jambugora is something, berries are something that bears really like. And uh, that helps the dwelling cause of the sloth bear. Also, further up northeast to Jambukoda Wildlife Sanctuary is the Ratan Mahal Sloth Bear Sanctuary. So it's a full belt of bear, bears. You know, it's about, a, I would say it's about 175 kilometer belt where you find. You won't be surprised if you see a bear. Uh, and, and often I have been chased off by sloth bears you know, at Jambukoda. Uh, in those 15 years that I ventured out there. I remember, uh, I remember one incident when I was uh, at uh, this Lafni beef with a hill, uh, more of a knoll, not a hill, uh, with huge boulders uh, making it a knoll. Uh, I never had an idea that the sloth that lived there. I couldn't even see the pug marks or scratch marks out there. N because we all as wildlifers check these things out before we try to rest into some crevice or a grave gave in a hot month of summer. And I just walked into a crevice and this guy was right sitting. It was a female rather, so she was just sitting right there. And I almost, I wouldn't like to use those words, but I almost peed in my pants because once I could just face a lion or a tiger or a leopard, but if you get into the clutches of a bear, especially a flood bear, it doesn't outrightly kill you. It mauls you so bad that you'll just, you'll have your face to hide from the world. So, but a beautiful, the champion of the cause uh, for a landman, for a photographer, a very good subject to go about, especially when it is with the baby. And the babies are on the back and you see the behavior. Oh, it will try to scare you away uh, with doubts in its mind that you're going to cause harm to its babies. Uh, uh, and, and the way it walks, ragged, laggard walk, you know, but I still find a lot of grace in that walk. Could we please move on to the next slide, please? This is a surprise, a rarity, a rarity, not just in Jambukura, but a rarity. Not many people get to see the phone horn, four horned antelope. The four horned horn antelope, or the choking guys, we call it in Hindi and Old. Uh, even in Gujarati, they call it Chautinga. Uh, it's a very, uh, it is said to be common, but 
very elusive actually. It is known to have uh, been cited in very few centuries and national parks in India and does not enjoy the popularity as its other, uh, you know, the antelope cousins such as the black bug or the gazelle. You know, it's very shy, it's very secretive, very elusive, uh, and it feeds, uh, feeds on grasses and herbs and shrubs, uh, flowers and fruit. Uh, almost about two feet high. It's a small antelope fish. It's just about two feet high. It runs very fast, though, uh, like every, every other deer or an antelope. And in 15 years that I ventured out in Jamukura Wildlife Sanctuary, I only sighted it four times, the Chowsinger. It's so elusive. I myself just sighted it just four times. Uh, another beauty, if you could move to the next slide, please. Now, this beauty is the flying squealer. Oh, oh, you could, I could cut my head off to see one of them. Uh, uh, it's uh, the flying squirrel, a little a squirrel kind thing, little bigger in size. Sometimes it's mistaken for a giant squirrel, but no, it's a flying squirrel. Uh, though elusive and a rare sight, very rare sight. It is uh, mostly sighted in the Kevli beads of the sanctuary. The Jambugura sanctuary has different beads. The Kevli is one of the most beautiful beads that you could ever go. Leopards and uh, sloth bears and chosen uh, and even the flying squirrels. So Kevli is where you should go if you're going to jump. Uh, uh, the reason being the trees in Kevli beads are of the taller species. Those trees which are uh, the taller species. So, uh, you know, this this uh, beautiful thing would love to, you know, glide. It doesn't fly, actually. It glides. And it glides from tree to tree on the higher level. And then it would climb up to the next tree and then glide from there to the other tree at the lower level. Then again climb up and it would keep on changing that way. So, uh, in all my 15 years, uh, at Jambu Good, I've seen it only twice. It's so rare. Uh, I would be very honest with that. I would not go and brag and say, oh, I've seen much of it. No, but but they, they are there. They are there. You need a lot of patience to see them. And, uh, you'll get this if you ever come down to Jambu Good. Uh, next slide, please. This is a view. The palm signal. Love, cute, cuddly. Uh, uh, if you're a good cartoonist or an artist, you could love to draw the nice tunes out of it, you know. You know? Uh, nice uh, caricatures and nice cartoons from it. Uh, the palm sea was uh, uh, another interesting species that can be found at Jambukura Wildlife Sanctuary. Uh, this cute little mammal, uh, you know, on an average, it weighs about three kgs. Uh, it's nocturnal by nature and very shy. Very rarely sighted, but you know, if you go at night, it literally makes this noise, and it's from this noise on the trees that you get to know. Oh yeah, it's right there, and then you throw a torch. It's not a good thing to do, but then if you're a wildlife lover, you're a wildlife lover, and you do a variety of things. Uh, I don't exactly condemn people doing that, but in a way, just look at the right and then to the left and then do that stuff. Uh, Make sure you respect the wildlife. Why? Yeah. Right. Can we go to the next uh, slide, please, Bai? So, uh, uh, let's say other mammals and birds of Jambugoda Wildlife Sanctuary. Uh, one can find hyena. The hyenas at Jambugoda are, you know, easy to sight. Jack, Hell, Blue Wolves. Blue Wolves are everywhere. Rusty spotted cat. Now, this is another attraction. Rusty spotted cat are seen here. Jambu Goda, wild boar, porcupine, Indian rock python. Uh, I remember rescuing my first ever python in my initial days at Jambu Goda. Some, someone who had no idea, and, you know, basically we, uh, as Mohit Bhai himself is a Shaivite, but I'm sure Mohit Bhai agrees that despite uh, in our culture, in our tradition, in our faith, in our mythology, uh, you know, we worship the snake. A uh, lot of people worship a snake just because it is supposed to be worshipped and because they're profound. But none know that uh, this beautiful 
thing. If we worship it, then we should love. We should not be. Scared. So this one, some someone drove a tractor over it, being scared of it. And me and my friend, uh, the guy who actually taught me, Ravin Mara, the guy who taught me how to handle reptiles. He was my guru in reptile handling. He is my guru. Uh, and we took the python, measured about. I exactly remember. Uh, a staggering 13 feet 8 inches, uh, and uh, we stitched it. So I also remember that we had to give it 27 stitches. Uh, so pythons are a plenty. Down the uh, if you uh, uh, crocodiles are there and mongoose, uh, and among the birds, overall 144 species of birds are recorded in Jambu. Now Jambu Kuda exactly. Uh, it is a very good birding destination, but it doesn't have a particular bird to, you know, it, it has 18 common birds of India, and other than that, it's got the migra migratory ones that comes in, the leaf birds and different kind of other things that, you know, the woodpeckers and the hornbills and so it's it's not that that like Velavadar has a floric and Jambugura has something that is exclusive. No, Jambugura is a homo mixture of everything. Now, next slide, please. How to reach Jambukura for those who are interested or at all impressed with whatever little I could share about Vilavadar and Jambukura. So Jambukura, it's closed again from June to October, just like any other centuries or national parks in India. All the roads that cross uh, through Jambukura, and there are many such roads, uh, remain open. And the visitors use it as an excuse to venture into the forest. So. Jamugura has this problem, you know, because there are a lot of people staying inside uh, the uh, the wildlife sanctuary, and there are a lot of roads that go through, like uh, roads to Chodaudepur and Bodeli, and then the, there's one that cuts off and goes towards Baruch and Rashikla, and then there's one that cuts off and goes up towards, uh, you know, in and round to Godra. So there are a lot of roads that go through, and people just make it, oh, I'm just traveling on the and there's nobody to check and the system is just a bit too weak so people just venture it at any given point of time into the forest uh, it's it's then that uh, the patrolling parties catch them that's a different story uh, so i recommend the period to visit jambu Gora, this beautiful uh, wildlife sanctuary is from november to march uh, gujarat is uh, a frying pan in summer so avoid summer when you come to Gujarat. It's a it's a frying pan. You you wouldn't like to be in Gujarat. The average temperature in cities like Ahmedabad is about 48 degrees centigrade in the big month. Right now we are going through it, and I have had a very tough Ramzan, you know, uh, going through it, uh, fasting. So Gujarat is could really test your uh, willpower and you test your strength. So uh, to reach Jambu Goda, uh, you know, uh, uh, Baroda Airport or Vadodara Airport, Baroda and Vadodara, the same thing, is well connected to both Mumbai, Delhi, and other destinations, uh, two or three other destinations in India. But Mumbai and Delhi, it's well connected, daily two flights, uh, and you can always come to Baroda. And the Baroda railway station is the biggest railway station in the Western zone. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's a, a division. So all kinds of trains come to Baroda, and it's about 70 to 80 kilometers from this national park. The closest international uh, airport, though, is Ahmedabad, which is about 165 kilometers. Uh, Jamukura has got some very good places to stay, fortunately. Uh, Velavada, despite being the national park, as you don't have much options there. But Jamukura gives you a lot of options on budgets, even shoestring budgets, it gives you. Uh, for a nice day, you could just walk into the Jambugoda Palace at the Thakusta of Haveli. And it's a home away from home, is what they call it. He has been so kind, Vikram C.G. Rana, Thakur Sahab of Jambugoda, uh, that, uh, you know, for 15 years, when all weekends I used to go there and study the leopard and these other denizens, the beautiful denizens of the forest, he always gave, had a room for me. So you just give away one room. And he would tell his people that Hasipa is coming, so don't give away this room. And now he has 64 rooms in the Haveli. 
uh, with heritage homes. And then there are other very high-end places where you could stay. So Jamugoda really gives you very good, uh, uh, you know, choice and diversified budget uh, can have this option to come. So this was about the first part of the story, stories about the lesser known places. Although Velavadar, I do not count Velavadar as much lesser known. Still, uh, when uh, nationally, when you call Velavadar as a national park, it's still not that well known, but it's worth a visit. And so is Jambugoda, despite being just a wildlife sanctuary and not a national park. It's amazing. Close to my heart, the, the landscape is amazing. December, January, when you come, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And you could just walk into a leopard. You could just walk into a hyena or a sloth bear. Or you could just see a python resting somewhere around. So, but you just need to have be a good wildlife lover, a diehard one to see all that. Otherwise, a couple of hours of walking and but you need the heart of a, a good conservationist or a good naturalist. Uh, uh, my second part of talk is about my wildlife art and my wildlife sketches. And Mohit Bhai, thanks to him, he put a special impetus saying that Hasi Bhai, you should just do this. Uh, and you should also put it there. So thanks to Mohit by that I just get to, you know, uh, uh, just just share with you. You know, I'm not a artist or whatever it is. As a child, I, was, I always excelled in arts and crafts. I always used to be, uh, you know, be praised by my teachers, by my art teachers as a good, uh, you know, guy who, who could draw good or, you know, Although my handwriting were the worst in the class, though. Uh, and no wonder after reading the works of the naturalists and conservationists, field biologists and other wildlife authors I mentioned before, and giving special peaks. I used to give special peaks to the illustrations in these books that I used to read. You know, we uh, back then we used to have these books uh, with a lot of text in it. And then in some middle pages, we used to have this picture. And sometimes we used to have hand-drawn pictures. So I used to, you know, give a very nice sneak peek onto it and learn how to do it, you know, uh, and the photograph uh, along with the text. I was, uh, I was without a shade of doubt motivated by the, to sketch and draw and paint the vibrant and captivating nature and wilderness with its indomitable tenant. Now here, uh, one of the books that uh, I used to often, that Rashid Saab had gifted me, it's a Mark publication, a uh, beautiful book by, Ustad Mansu, he was a, uh, you know, uh, a 16th century Mughal court painter, especially in the court of the, the famous uh, court Mughal king, uh, Jahangir. Jahangir, the husband to Mumtaz. Uh, no, no, sorry, not Mumtaz, uh, the husband to Noor Jahan. Uh, so Jahangir had this guy called uh, Ustad Mansur, who was a very good artist at his book. And you should search for Ustad Mansur's painting on the internet or look for the book by the Mark publication. Uh, and you will love, at that point of time in the 16th century, during the Mughal time, what lovely painting it is. He's the, he's my inspirator in chief when it comes to wildlife sketching or drawing. Yeah. So I first saw this uh, book by Ustad Mansur with my mentor, Amir Rashid Sahab and was highly uh, impressed uh, with his work. And that's what put me on to this uh, beautiful uh, art of drawing. Uh, to begin with, I drew everything, but I got more closer to uh, nature and wildlife and absorbed the inevitable aspect of conservation. I gradually shifted my focus on sketching birds and animals. Uh, initially, I used color pencils, crayons, poster colors, watercolor, color sketch pans, oil paints, acrylic paint, fabric paint to draw and sketch. But then I found that the charcoal was a magic, you know, and it was the charcoal on paper that was the right kick to my addiction to drawing. So I did a lot of stuff with charcoal on paper when it comes to animals and birds. Uh, you know, uh, first I tried animals and then gradually the birds stole my heart away and it, uh, you know, they landed on my paper. Uh, 
So let me run over some of my charcoal words and works and pencil works here on paper. Uh, on an average, each uh, of this work takes at the most 25 odd minutes, you know. So here is charcoal on paper. It's a, it's a peeking tiger, a tiger which is peeking from behind a, a, a stump or a trunk of a tree. And I love the eyes, this, this eye. So I just took out and I just tried to do. Not all of my works, uh, I'll be very honest, are live. Or I saw it and did it. Some of the pictures from books also impressed me and I tried my hand on it. So they are, there are certain, uh, you know, pictures of uh, my artworks here that are from somebody else's photographs or something that I brought. Uh, could we please go to the next slide? One of my favorites, this is the uh, Roaring Tiger from Carl. Uh, I, I, I loved the way it uh, showed all its four huge canines. And, uh, so I also took out some books to finish the drawing, but I, I got the basic idea and I sketched it from when I was taking a, 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 a safari to, to the Vijrani area. And not often in Vijrani, I got lucky with the tiger. So this was one of the uh, times when I got this. And this thing, young thing was very irritated and agitated, probably a failed hunt or something and just rode and passed by. So I took an outline and then I finished it from the book. Uh, I just tried to do whatever I could right there, uh, sitting in the gypsy. Uh, and, and my four travelers in the gypsy and the driver and the guide were highly impressed with whatever I did. Although at that point of time, I wasn't. And then later I finished it. And next slide, please. This is a beauty, another for me. I'm, I'm not asking you to praise it. Uh, for me, it's a beauty. But this is something that I again saw in Parma. Uh, she was, it was a Jirna. And again, Jirna is one of those which where you uh, don't much see a tiger. She was probably shifting. And somehow she only had this one solitary cup. Uh, maybe the others died or whatever. Feel sorry for her. Uh, she just, the tigress carried the cup. I, I tried to follow her and tried to finish this and then went to the room and finally finished it later. Uh, next, please. This is the one from Jambugura, a grunting leopard, an agitated leopard. Very close to me it was. And me and Tariq Qureshi, my, uh, you know, uh, he was my student learning leopards. So he's still a young man, a wonderful guy, uh, a six-feeter, a very well-built guy. And every time we ventured out into the jungle, Tariq would not let me go first. And he would go in and check things and then say, bhai and the rajao safe uh, you know so we was just sitting on some of the boulders and this one came in uh, just to eat away you know just to be a scavenger on a carcass of a domestic animal uh, domestic herd that was just owned by and it thought that we were disturbing it uh, time and again and that's, uh, I, I was very fast at it because the light was fading in the evening and that's when I tried to draw this uh, could we please go to the next one and this is uh, uh, again at uh, Carmen, the macaques, the beautiful mother and the baby. Uh, you know, they, they, they are almost human. They are almost human. Their feelings, their love, their passion, their, their care for each other. And look at the baby. Uh, the original would have been so good. This is by uh, just an ordinary artist. And the original you could imagine was so good. Good. the baby is just playing with the mother's uh, neck and chin, you know, trying as if a human baby is kissing the mother's neck and mother's cheek. So it, it was a heart-touching moment and I tried to do what, whatever I could uh, right there before they just moved away. Uh, next, please. Again, a high enough up from uh, Jambugura. I, I, I missed out on the strikes here, but uh, the pup was uh, uh, people don't find it cute. I found it cute. And so I tried not to darken it. So I left it light, uh, you know, just to give it, uh, just to show people and slap on people that 
they are ugly babies. No, they are not ugly. They are cute babies. Uh, so I left it white. I didn't shade it. But it looks like a high enough pop. So I tried what, what I wanted. Next, please. The honey badger. Oh. And I never saw this thing. But I did see it. Uh, semi uh, human inhabited area in Banaska. And it was just walking. Uh, in Gujarat, they call it the Gurkhodia or the grave digger. But actually, I don't think they are the grave digger. Uh, time and again, I ventured out into graveyards at night uh, to check out if honey badgers come in. So they're very curious, they're fearless, they would just, you know, they wouldn't worry. Uh, what size is the opener? You know, just give up, go at them. Uh, so this is the one I did in the Panaska house when I was just driving to. Uh, uh, we we just went to a friend's sister wedding and uh, it was in the night time that I saw something like a forest, huge piece of land, kilometers, and no inhabitants. And I just went in there. And I was lucky to find it. <laughs> Uh, next, please. Here is again charcoal on paper. This is the red-headed one. It's a beautiful one. I did not see it in wild. I, I, I drew it from a book. I saw it on a, in a wildlife magazine. Uh, and uh, I draw it. I, I like the way it was gazing around. So it was in a colored thing. So I said I would try to do it in black and white with the charcoal. Uh, and my those who saw it thought that it, it came out good so i was happy with it. uh it's got a nice big i love vultures we all love them you know? and they are very good a uh, very docile with their size and very dangerous talents and beef but very docile a vulture so yeah they love it uh next one please ah uh, this is pencil on paper uh, and this is the brahmini kai uh, and uh, again, this uh, the one that uh, I drew wasn't the one that I saw in white. I saw it in uh, probably the Century magazine, uh, and I just drew it. I, I I found it to be very beautiful right there on the cover page. I just drew it, so I liked it. The Brahmini guy, and I enjoyed doing it. Uh, as I told you, each one of these space on an average takes about 20 to 25 minutes for me to draw and shade and get through. The next one was a fast one by me. I did it. I remember I did it seven minutes. This is a golden OVL charcoal on paper and it took me seven. This is right outside my house in Ahmedabad city. In Ahmedabad city, I repeat, the golden Oriel comes around my house, you know, uh, in, a, in our common plot garden, which is... Uh, I often fight with my neighbors because they want to cut away the trees and plants there because uh, they shed a lot of leaves and they don't like cleaning every now and then the parking areas and the cars. Uh, so I'm not that popular in that particular garden. But uh, with the kids, I'm very popular because I keep on teaching them uh, about birds and animals. Uh, when I, when I, uh, rescue a snake, I make sure that I once bring it home so that uh, society uh, kids can see that particular snake and study it and somehow, you know, show their inclination towards the wild. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, uh, the next one again, uh, uh, if you could go please. Yeah, this is uh, the Great Indian Buster. And again, not in the wild. Uh, this one is from, uh, I, I think, the BNHS Hornbill magazine. I saw it. And I liked it, and I, I, I sketched it. It's again charcoal on paper, uh, and uh, I love it. Uh, the next, please. Osprey. Beautiful plant. I love it. Osprey. This is, this is at the Sabarmati River, and I was very surprised to see it. I thought, how could it come there? And it was there. And... Uh, it kept on coming down and going up, coming down and going up and going on the further end of the bank or opposite to me. So I, I first created an imaginary image 
uh, outline of it in my mind every time it passed by and then first i took a outline then every time it passed by i took picked up the details from it and finally it came out to be this one i was satisfied with it so i put it up for you guys to see uh uh next slide please ah oh, this is at nalsar oh nalsar over i did this was quite uh, quite a while back and this is the lesser planning uh, and this was very easy to draw because it stood in this position and it never moved <laughs> and for me it was like wow oh, a piece of cake and i just went through the outline and then gave the shade to it uh, and there it came up uh, i was satisfied and kept it up uh, next slide please this i did at give at a friend's uh, farm house which is known as the wadi these wadis are the small places uh, farm houses within the national park or on the periphery or in the buffer zone of the national park uh, you go there and you see a lot of bird life and a lot of wildlife too and lions come into the wadi or the farm land and they rest below the mango a gujarat kesar mango you know trees and they just sleep there and you're just about 25 30 feet away from the lion and you you are self lying down there uh, and this paradise fly catcher goes uh, you know from tree to tree uh, this was a lovely young male full plumage full white color and went and sat on one of the peaks of the uh, mango kesar mango tree i just drew it it came out to be very beautiful for me at least So yeah. So later on, uh, the craze hit me that it was uh, the miniature birds that I could try and I could do because I, uh, my other profession to earn bread and butter for the families as a tour guide. So I do a lot of tour guiding in different genres such as the travel tour, spiritual tour. Uh, I do a lot of good spiritual tours, Jain legs and Vaishnav Hindu legs and. uh muslim legs of tours but we don't get that much but uh, we do get a lot of jain legs and vaishno hindu legs of tourists coming in uh spiritual legs and i do the rajput leg the nawab leg uh and the architectural legs so uh, i i see all these beautiful miniatures as i sit down like you can see miniatures of moguls uh behind me on my sitting room wall so i got about uh, 30 or 40 odd of the of this uh, throughout the house of mogul miniatures so i love miniatures so i i was i i thought why not uh, paint rather than sketch on charcoal uh, miniature birds and then i started uh, you know thinking that why shouldn't we be innovative what should we do to promote nature so i said let's not use paper and i started using rocks and pebbles and that's how i got into it so this craze hit me about and somehow the idea struck me that uh, i should do it on a medium uh, on which not many people or people do and i thought of rocks and pebbles and although i have painted uh, birds on wooden planks uh, clothing porcelain and even on egg shells i have painted so uh, yeah but the rock idea just hit me uh and let me run you through some of my rock things if you could go to the next slide please yeah that's uh that's about three and a half centimeters from the tip of the uh beak to the tip of the tail <laughs> it's a common crow house crow whatever you call it <laughs> and that is on a pebble <laughs> or a rock you may call it uh a stone you may call it uh, next please this is on a very tiny one it's about less than 2 cm that is about 20 mm from uh, in breadth it's the ashiprenia <laughs> so uh, all the colors came out to be good this one is good it's yeah please man. this one is good i i loved it because the rock ro the the rock was rounded and i had to give it a three dimensional look uh, i i took a hard time in taking a picture of it on my uh, on my phone ultimately one of the angles hit and showed it straight so this is the hoopo and i really the one of my favorite for me at least from my
So if you could go to the next one. Ah, Pesar Domesticus, the house sparrow. This is a little bigger one. It's about uh, uh, seven centimeters, eight centimeters uh, in breadth. And uh, I have a very good friend, elderly friend, Mr. Jagatkin Kampala. And he is the man who works on, knows nothing else but sparrows, you know. He wouldn't differentiate between two other uh, new birds that he saw. So he's not a birder in particular, but he's the one who has taken up the cause of uh, saving the house sparrow in Gujarat. And in India, there's another guy called uh, Mohammed Dilawar from Nashik, who is a very close friend, like a brother to me. And uh, he's called the Sparrow Man of India. So Jagat Bhai is a sparrow man of uh, Gujarat. So I gifted this to Jagat Bhai. He said uh, in Gujarati, he said, Hasi Bhai, mane chak chakli banai apo. So Hasi Bhai, please make a house sparrow for me. Uh, and so I got this very nice, uh, smooth, roundish uh, rock, uh, riverbed rock, and just brought it home. I, I love to steal things from nature. Uh, as long as they are not living and survive, so I just brought it home, and uh, and then I painted it right there. With the, I use fabric paint. Fabric paint is the one that I use here because they give the shine on panel, nice shine on panel. Uh, next one was a challenging one, and I thought, uh, uh, you know, this is the chief piece. It, 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 this is uh, this is going to Pango. Uh, I have the set of three, G, Koklas, and, uh, 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 you know, uh, the Kalich. And I have made this three for our own uh, Mohit Bhai. And this is going to Pango. So this is the cheer fission. Uh, it's very small, believe me. You can compare it with the pencil that I've put next to it. So you'll get an idea of the length of breath. Uh, the next one was very challenging. Now, this is a very rough, uneven stone. And I said I would test my limits by trying to draw a bronze back Japan. And I don't know if you guys agree or not. To me, I thought I, I, I just made it through, you know, my own self-test. And <laughs> I liked it. And it, it's, it's a beautiful piece uh, that I still have. Someday I'm going to give it up to This one is my favorite, although I've not named it on the slide. This is the uh, Indian roller. You know? The colors came out to be good. Uh, this one is also big, about five centimeters above. But yeah, I like the way it was right there in front of my house, uh, you know, in the garden, one of the trees at the highest point. And I said, I'll try it. It came out to be very good. Came out uh, I thought, yeah. So I'm I'm going to give it to one of the guys, uh, Mujahid, uh, the owner of the Run Riders at uh, the Sara. So that's for his Mujahid. But uh, Mohit, by your stuff is coming. I think one of the stuff was the peacock that I gave you, and that was a lovely piece for me at least, and I did it for you. So yeah. So could we please hand over? Uh, with the last slide. Yeah, so I thank you all for bearing with me, for listening to me, for, you know, for, for maybe some of you might <laughs> think that you already knew what I said, but, uh, you know, I did it with the best of my ability. Uh, and these are the little details of mine right there. My phone number, my email address, if you wish to get in touch with me. I'm on the WhatsApp on the same number. Uh, and I thank you all for bearing with me and listening to me. And most of all, I thank uh, Mohit Bhai, Asian Adventures team, who have always been so friendly. Uh, and they gave me the second chance to come about. So I think that they probably must have liked my first line webinar that I did with them. And I hope and pray that you again give me a chance to come back. Thank you all. Uh, please forgive me if there are any flaws in whatever I said. Thank you so much, my friend. That was absolutely amazing. Absolutely brilliant. And thank you very much for 
you know for for sharing your art your journey your knowledge about jambu goda and melapda it was really nice and you also kept everybody entertained you know you talk about so many different things you know uh, and and of course people had more questions but the time is limited and i really like to thank all the lady, you know all the visitors all the guests here all the ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for being here and thank uh, you know a big thank you to my team for working relentlessly to keep uh, these webinars going the purpose of this webinars uh, is is uh, multifaceted you know one is that let's engage everyone let's get everyone to think of conservation you know we need to respect life forms right now i was calling up a friend of mine and i asked him i said so how's eat going so he says um, this time is vegetarian so i said really he said why he said because we decided we won't have non vegetarian food now no we will just turn vegetarian but we've seen you know how things are anyway that was not a point of view the idea is not to where and that but the point is so so friends uh, stay engaged and continue to expand your knowledge your capacity to appreciate nature appreciate what mother earth has to give us she's given us huge amounts huge and it's never ending yeah? and it's beyond life it's much larger than life so you never have to worry about uh, any sort of shortage you know stay in abundance this time will pass it's also our duty to understand that this body is meant to take like the way it's meant to take all the heat and the cold and the happiness and the unpleasantness it's also supposed to take the matters of life and death you know joyfully so 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 let's let's engage with whoever we can help and whatever that we can do and when the time is right step out and get involved with any sort of conservation work that you can um whether it's through art or it's through poetry or it's through planting trees or it's through going to jungle and sharing your work helping people at grassroots level promoting the cause of uh, nature through various channels so thank you for being here uh, friends and a huge uh, round of applause for for asim bhai uh, for you know let me tell you friends he's working out of his phone he's not even using his computer so he's got a little phone that he's using right now and that's his um, best buddy um, and and you've done a wonderful job and we will be back again very soon next week we've still got some speakers um, who are willing to come back and talk about things but we still have to figure out their topics and they have been meaningful so that you all stay engaged yes yes as in bye please go right ahead you know this is this is a never ending journey and if you don't uh, throw yourself in you wouldn't love nature as you i'm just continuing to what we last said yeah, yeah. you have to push yourself into it so shayar bahut bada acha kehta hai ki aankh se dur na ho din se utar jayega waqt ka kya hai guzarta hai guzar jayega so we 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 need to push ourselves into it i mean you you need to turn time and again and look at nature and appreciate something that uh, that someone has made it for you and you're you're just abusing it and that's something that i like about the asian adventures what they do you know the simplicity uh, and things and that is why i i believe me mohit bhai i got so many opportunities from different places uh, to come and talk to you on that book no uh, you know through them i chose asian adventures because because the approach the teamwork all all the team members i may be forgetting names but uh, i think harpreet is also one of them and there are many other digbal and so uh, forgive me if i forget some names but but this is it with with lot of passion you 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 pushing people and the small things that you guys are doing by uh, you know uh, by keeping up not caring what number of attendees are there you know तेरे लश्कर के मुकाबले में तनहा ही सही फैसला मैदान में होगा कि जीतता कौन है सो यू नो सो कीप ऑन गोइंग कीप ऑन गोइंग गाइस आई एम विद यू एंड कीप ऑन दिस ब्यूटीफुल वर्क गोइंग थैंक यू थैंक यू लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन थैंक यू असीम भाई थैंक यू फ्रेंड्स एंड वी विल सी यू अगेन नेक्स्ट वीक बाय बाय शबाखेर शबाखेर